As Apollo 11 rumbled into space for its historic trip to the moon in the summer of 1969, three astronauts were on board. Purdue graduate Neil Armstrong, who passed away in 2012, was at the controls as the lunar lander approached the pocked surface of the moon. Apollo 11, Apollo 11, this is Houston, how do you read? Radio you loud and clear, Houston, how are you? And you're a go for landing, over. I do understand, go for landing. The final descent, that is the powered descent to the surface of the moon, was indeed the most difficult part of the flight for Apollo 11, and, and I suspect for the subsequent flights as well. It was, the systems were very heavily loaded. This part of the flight had never been done before. These parts of the systems had never been used before, and it was a very demanding task. So it was enormously satisfying to get through that first one and be able to successfully make that landing. We had hoped that when we got to the vicinity of the landing site, have a couple of minutes fuel left uh, to complete the landing. In our case, it was on a steep side of a large crater with very large boulders the size of automobiles. This wasn't a place that I wanted to try and make a landing. We had to extend our trajectory on to the west, maybe a quarter of a mile further. We had to, to find a, a smooth and relatively rock-free area. We used up good bill of our fuel in the process. Three feet, two and a half down, straight shadow, four forward, four forward, drift into the right a little, Ready? down a half, 30 seconds forward, just picking up some dust. Got the shadow out there. Contact light, Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here, the Eagle has landed. Roger, Twink. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. Well, I always thought the most important time was the landing. That was the critical uh, achievement of the Apollo program. Pilots, they like to make smooth landings, but they, they don't think much about getting down off the airplane. We see some angular blocks out several hundred feet in front of us that are probably two feet in size and have angular edges. Um, uh, at the foot of the ladder, the lamb footbeds are only depressed in the surface about one or two inches. I didn't really think about what I might say until after I landed. H having accomplished the landing, I realized I was going to have to say something, so I thought about it a bit. That's one small step for man. One Although pilots relate to landing, most people relate to walking, and so that's why it's become well known. There seems to be no difficulty in moving around. It's even perhaps easier than the simulations of 1-6G that we performed in various simulations on the ground. It has a stark beauty all its own, like much of the high desert of the United States. It's different, but it's very pretty out here. It does adhere to in the fine layers, like powdered charcoal, to the sole and inside of my boots. But I can see the footprints. For liftoff, the ascent engine would push the Eagle into orbit. For this one maneuver, this engine would have to work. Six, five, work stage, engine arm ascent, proceed. Shadow, yeah, beautiful. 26, 36 feet per second up. Yeah, I, I'd like to go back. I, I had to leave some things behind the first time because of our weight limits, and I'd like to go back and pick up those souvenirs. Roger, we got you coming home. Over the longer term, it's meant that humanity has uh, proven that it's not necessarily chained to this uh, planet for all eternity, that new goals and new places to go are available. The Aero School will use this device to study arc-heated propulsion. The time that I spent at Purdue learning engineering was absolutely critical to everything I've done throughout my entire career. When I was a student, there was no space program. There was not even a vision of a space program at that time. And certainly I never would have suspected that I would be involved in the projects that I ultimately became involved in. It came in peace for all mankind. The successes and the opportunities I had were largely a product of what 
what I learned from my professors at Purdue. It all taught you something. You just had to find a way to get that information from them successfully. One of the most important techniques in organic chemistry. I remember going to aerodynamics class, and the first day of class he gave us an assignment, which happened to be Bernoulli's Law, and the assignment was to criticize. And it was right then that I realized they weren't teaching us facts and information. It was teaching me how to think. And that turned out to be extremely important. I'm sure other universities have strong spirit and strong affinities for their institution, but I doubt that any surpass and few match the Purdue spirit. It's been an important part of my life all those many years since I was on the campus and it remains strong today. Oh,